Bang! Knees Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work. And today we are checking out the Tucson TS-226. Now, I know I haven't had it that long, but I've been carrying it every day since I got it. And with my good and bad videos, I have a list where I write down the goods and bads. And I carry it for um, up until the point to where I have the list complete. And I have my list complete. There's no more, no less that can go on it. I've been through it top to bottom. And as I'm carrying it, every time I come up with something negative or good, I write it down. So, and I've really been carrying and working with this thing. So, like I said, I'm ready. And, you know, let's do it. I just want to cut in a little message about Tucson really quick. So now Tucson's, you're going to get them on eBay and you're going to bid for them. Now they do, you find, you will find them on White Mountain Knives and Amazon and stuff like that. But for the most part, if you want to get them for the best prices, you're going to get them from eBay. And yes, you're going to wait anywhere from one week to four weeks to get them. Sometimes they tell you longer on there. Sometimes I've heard of people waiting a little bit longer, but I've only waited ever four weeks at the most. Usually I get Get them in two weeks. Ninety percent of all my two sons I got in two weeks. But the beautiful thing about the eBay is that we're regulating the market, so we get to determine how much these things go for, which is a beautiful thing. It's not like they just they tell you a price, uh, two hundred and fifty dollars. That's what it's worth. That's what you're paying. That's what everybody's paying. No, you get to determine how much you pay for it. So if you don't want to pay more than a hundred dollars for it, then you don't have to, and you can keep bidding eighty, ninety dollars, whatever you want to pay, and eventually you might win it. Now it might take you a little bit longer. But the point is, is that when they first drop, yes, they're more expensive, but the price will go down as time goes on and you get to, it, it winds up regulating how much they, they go for. We get to determine how much it is. Now, do they ghost bid them up? Probably. I, I mean, I can't be, know that hundred percent sure. And what I mean by ghost bidding them up is that will the company keep bidding on bidding on it theirself to make sure you don't get it less than this price maybe because they probably don't want it to go under the price that they paid but that's usually a lot cheaper i mean way cheaper than other companies so you can get a knife that from any other company would be $250 for, you know, $150, bucks, $100, $80, $70, you know, and knives that would be, and also they use materials with other materials that a lot of companies don't do. So a lot of companies, when you see titanium, they're not going to use anything less than S30V, S35VN. These guys, they'll throw some D2, they'll throw some 14C28N, some 12C27, but then they'll also use M390 and S90V. So they have a big range of what kind of knife you might want to get and for the price you want to get it for which is really cool so we're kind of regulating the market on how much you pay for these things which is awesome because you're getting amazing quality and build quality and some people out there some other you know i'm not gonna say i don't know who does this but uh, people out there kind of think of things like oh it's a 80 dollar knife oh well then that's what the build quality is it's an 80 no no, 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 no. This is beyond $80. It's far past that. And that's the beauty of it is that since we're regulating the, the value of it, you're getting more than what you're paying for. And that's a beautiful thing. Now, Riat and we are amazing build quality knives. Amazing. But they regulate how much you're paying for. They determine how much they're going to make on it. With these guys, you get that type of build quality for what you want to pay for it. Sometimes you're going to pay a little more. Sometimes you'll get a good deal. But it just depends on how new it is and how popular it is. But there you guys go. Let's get back to the video. All right, so let's do the specs first really quick, and then we'll go over the good and bad. Now, first off, I just want to say this is a Jelly Jerry design. I really like Jelly Jerry's designs. His designs have been very impressive. Let's do a measure. So it's about eight and a quarter with a 3.6 inch blade. So just over three and a half inch blade. 
eight and a quarter total length. Let's do a couple size comparisons. So yeah, um, I really like uh, Jelly Jerry's designs, man. His designs just really speak to me. I have another one of design. his designs. It's actually out at the moment. Otherwise, I'd break it out. There it is against the Hogue Ritter RSK. You can see it's uh, just a tip bigger than it. Not much at all. And you're also at a little bit of an angle. Let me see if I can straighten these out a little bit more. Let's put it up against the Tucson TS-129. It is a little little bit bigger than it. See, the thing is, that this has this little peak right here. So if you're going literally from right here and not from right here, then uh, it's a little bit bigger. But if you actually go from where your hands are light, it's the exact same size. So you can look at it like that if you want to. Um, next up, let's put it up against, we already did the Ritter Hogue, so I'm not, you know what, here we go. The Kershaw Bare Knuckle. That's a good size comparison right there. Kershaw Bare Knuckle. So it's a great EDC. Damn it, I just dropped the Bare Knuckle. <laughs> So it's a great EDC size for a full-size hand. Let me back this out a little bit. For a full-size hand, zoom in just a little bit. There we go. Um, and let's get into this good and bad. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's go top to bottom. Let's start with the blade. This is 14C28N steel, which I love. I love 14C28N, and I think that Tucson does a great job with their 14C28N. They do a great job with their Sandvik steels. The blade shape, great. I love a good drop point blade. This is one of the most useful blade shapes because you have a flat right here for push cuts. You have a nice belly for roll cuts or for slicing, whatever. And then very easy access to the tip. I did sharpen this thing and it took a very nasty sharp edge. Hair pot, hair whittling, hair splitting edge. Very thin behind the edge. This thing is, man, I got this thing at nine thousandths behind the edge. Now, a lot of parts were eight or 10 thousandths, but between nine and 10 thousandths behind the edge, stupid thin. This thing's very thin, amazing blade geometry. The you got it's got a really good sharpening choil. It was very easy to sharpen. The grind was nice and even on both sides. So my edge bevel is nice and even. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a close up. Very nice edge, and yeah, I'm loving it. It's a uh, Got, we'll get to the chamfer and this hole, but I just want to speak on it really quick. They do have this nice fuller up and down, which adds, um, which gives you know a little shape right there, kind of like a spear point. But it has a nice, good, reliable tip. It's not a tip I'm really worried about using. Some tips you got to worry about it chipping off, and this one's even though it's nice and thin and good for puncturing, it works really well. And this fuller has a nice um, chamfer. What I'm talking about is I'm talking about right there, this little chamfer right there, which gives you a nice spot for um, the action, which we'll get into in a minute. Nice jimping right here, and it works good in this position, the jimping, but you can also go up. We will get to the next thing. So um, this thing's titanium carbon fiber inserts, as you can see. Nice, big hardware. I love T8s. T8s all the way around. The only T6 is on the steel lock bar insert. It does have all the bells and whistles. We will get to the ergos in a second, but first let's talk about the action. So the action is really nice. The detent is perfect. Nice and crisp detent. Listen, you can hear it drop into the detent. Very, very smooth. And for the flipper right here, works really, really good. The access to the lock bar, very, very nice. Very, very smooth. The middle finger flick is nice and easy. And you can also thumb flick it. It's not as easy as you can see, 
But if I'm not, with my arms not around the camera, it's actually a little bit easier than I'm making it seem. As you can see, I can get it just about every time if I really want to. But the middle finger flick is super easy. And you can also put your finger a little bit lower on this, the, the chamfer right here, like I was saying, or the, the groove right here. You can use it. But you don't have to. You can put your finger right here in the, in the middle, and it works really, really well. Now, the top flipper, eh, it's, it works, um, but it's not the best. And I'll talk about that in the bad of why, but let's talk about the Ergos now. So the Ergos are fantastic. Gives me a good place right here for my finger. And if I want to back up a little bit, nice place right there. You can put your finger right there, but it's not really made for it. But you can because it does give you a nice little area. The reverse grip works really good. Um, you can get up nice and close to the blade if you really want to. I just put my finger right over the top right there. But the Ergos are fantastic. They barely feel the clip, if at all. Like, I don't really feel it. Um, but it gives you the nice straight back design. And when it's nice and straight right there, that fits right into your palm. And then right here just gives you the natural area of whatever your hand. You know, all of us have hands, right? But we have different size hands, different thickness of fingers. So it's nice when it gives you the option to put your fingers where you want to place them rather than where it's trying to make you Put your fingers and this one lets you land wherever you're going to land so i imagine anybody's hands will have good ergos with this it has really cool milling i might have to throw in a picture because it might be hard to get but let's see if we can get it in a close-up it almost has like a beaded pattern oh there we go you see right there how it's like dot da dot da dot like it's really cool the entire thing is milled out like that with like the lines and then it has like a cross lines it's kind of like just like a dot dot the dots um but it's really really cool i really like the way it feels in the hand and it almost has like a stone wash to it which i think is really cool it will definitely help with the, with scratches and stuff they'll just look natural which i really like that the carbon fiber no voids it looks really good even the holes are uh chamfered really nice for the screws so there's no voids it looks really really good um like i said the hardware tucson's hardware is so good um, I've never, ever stripped out Tucson's hardware. Never, ever have I had a problem with their hardware. They're nice and deep, usually T8s, and they just work really good. I mean, that's a good thing from a company to give you good hardware. It makes the knife that much more reliable. So, like I was saying before, I almost forgot to get to it. The middle finger flick right here, the reason why it winds up working out so good is because this chamfer right here. Now... Sometimes that can be a bad thing. A lot of times you want there to not be a chamfer there, but what they did was they put the right size chamfer. So when you put the right size chamfer, it makes it to where it actually grabs your finger rather than if it was too big. If it was too big of a chamfer, you would just slide off and it wouldn't be easy. But since they put a tiny chamfer, a little tiny small chamfer on there, it works really good. Okay, so the clip... The clip is amazing. It won barely anything sticking out of your pocket. That's the only thing that sticks out of your pocket. And you see how it kind of canters to the side just a little bit. It makes it to where it lands on a perfect spot to where it slides in and out of the pocket. So good. The ramp on it works really good. There's plenty of room and it has a good amount of tension. It works so good. Tucson did an amazing job on this clip. Next thing, it works so good in the hand. Like it, it's kind of rounded right here where it just is nice and comfortable in the hand you, you barely feel it if at all when you're up here you don't even feel it when you're back here you don't feel it just it, it works so good they did a killer job on the ergos with the clip where it lands and how it sits the tension perfect clip overall i love it now the overall build quality on this thing is phenomenal very good build quality. It's nice and strong, nice and centered. If that's a little off, I just got to hit the pivot real quick. Let's just do it right now. Because I had been flicking this thing and using this thing like crazy. So there you go. Nice and centered up. The action is phenomenal. Everything, the build quality on this is phenomenal. It does have um, ceramic um ceramic bearings on a racetrack so they're two little washers that the ceramic bearings can roll on so it doesn't roll right on titanium 
and then it has a ceramic detent ball over travel stop and a reverse detent track. So the reverse detent track gives it to where you can just push it right past. Now it does have just a regular stop pin. As you can see, a lot of times Tucson's give you the internal stop pins like this, where it's uh, the stop pins are actually on the knife itself. This one is just a regular stop pin. So lots of great things. Now the price. Usually this thing goes for around 70, 80 bucks. I paid a little bit more because I got sick of losing on eBay, but I did get it in only two weeks. So that was a that was a great thing. My other one I got in one week, this one in two weeks, I'm still waiting for my third one, which I did buy last. I bought after this one. So I'm expecting it within the next week. We'll see how it goes. But I paid about a hundred bucks for it, which in my opinion, that, that is overpriced for me because I like to bid and get good prices, but it is one of the newer ones. And come on, I mean, it's 14C28M, which I love. Tucson does a great job with it. Titanium, carbon fiber, great build quality. It's worth a hundred bucks all day in my opinion. Um, and let's get to the bad stuff. Okay, so first thing, the front flipper. The reason why it sucks and, well, I'm not going to say it sucks because you can do it. What you got to do is you got to turn it towards you when you do it. And then it works a little bit easier. But one, a couple reasons why. One, this flipper tab hits you right here. So you can pinch you right there. You just got to hold a little bit lower. And I got big hands, so that's not really a problem for me. For Kara, it was. That part's not the problem. The problem is this... Uh, this um, jimping. So do you see this top part, how there's no jimping right here? That's flat. So that's what you feel. They should have put jimping all the way up and around this thing. They should have put jimping all the way to, to the top peak. If they would have did that, this thing would be great. Now you see, I can do it. It's not that it's that bad, but it's not as good as a lot of other front flippers. Now, if they would have just put that jimping right up there and sharper jimping too, because the jimping right here, if you look at the jimping right here, it's a little sharper than this jimping. I would have liked to have seen the jimping closer together like this, closer together like this jimping instead of so far apart right there and a little bit deeper and it would work a little bit easier, but you can still do it. So it's not like you can't do it. Um, next thing, the carbon fiber inlays, they're very nice. There's no voids. And this is a very little complaint. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is some nitpicking. If you've ever heard nitpicking, I'm about to nitpick, uh, because I love two cents so much. So the inlays are pretty much all nice. And you can see like they are, it's well done, beautiful jimping. Um, I do like this big ass pivot collar too. I forgot to say that, but eh, there's a couple spots where it's just a tiny bit high. Like most of it's all really good, but I can feel it right there. It's raised up a little bit right there. It's raised up a little bit right there. Now, if it would have been the exact same height all the way around, I wouldn't be complaining and I'm really not complaining. Like I said, this is a very subtle nitpick, but like right here there, I don't feel it. Right. So right here, there's no shelf. Right here, shelf. Right here, shelf. Right here, no shelf. Right here, small shelf. Right here, tiny shelf. Right here, barely no shelf. So it just has a couple spots where it's raised up a little bit higher than other spots. But it's such a small thing. And these are beautiful inlays. Please don't take that to heart. That was ridiculous. I, I should smack myself for even talking about that. The next bad thing is for their Sandvik steels tend to show a lot more fingerprints and scratches than you see how fingerprinty it is right now. Um, than their other steels, all their other steels with this exact same finish, they, it doesn't fingerprint like their Sandvix. The Sandvix steels just show a lot more scratches and wear than their other steels. Now, is it that big of a deal? Not really, but I, you know, I think what it is is that their their Sandvix steels tend to be a little more polished looking. Let's look at another one of their knives. This is M390. And it, this doesn't fingerprint nowhere near as bad as this one. Now watch when I do it on this one. 
Oh, it's not really. You know what? My cam, my lighting is really bad right now. But in my vision, I can see it. In the camera, I can't. Oh, I guess right there you can. A little bit. There you go. See now, like on this one, it still shows. But in my, you know, in the camera, it's always different than in reality. But in reality, <laughs> in the real, in the real world, it, it does. It's it's far worse than the other steels. Now it's not that big of a deal, but it does get a little bit scratchy. I wish they would do more some stone washing. Now that being said, I do love the way their satin finishes look. I think it looks beautiful. I love the 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 grind lines. You know, I love that. It looks like it's nice. You know, has lots of grinds. Now, I just wish it wasn't so polished. I wish they would put the grind lines a little bit deeper. Then it wouldn't take such fingerprints as bad. Or do it stone washed. My next complaint is, is I think this stop pin is a little small. Now, this is another nitpick, but this is kind of a thick blade stock. I think it's 3.7 millimeters. I'll write it down if I'm wrong, but I think it's 3.7 or 3.8 millimeters. You know what? This one was 3.7. Let's look at this. Okay, so it looks like it's about 3.8 millimeters thick. So it's got a relatively thick blade stock, even though it has amazing blade geometry. It's still somewhat of a heavy blade, right? I just feel like they could have used a little bit bigger stop pin, or I wish they would have put the internal stop pins in. That's not that big of a deal, but you can see how small it is. Let's, let's compare it to this $25 land knife. That's the stop pin. See the size difference? Big difference in size. Now let's grab another knife. Let's grab another Tucson. Okay, here we go. Here's another Tucson. Look how big that stop pin is. Look how small this one is. A lot smaller. So it's just one of those things. Now, is it really going to be that big of a deal? Probably not. But I'm saying it because I like big stop pins. The next thing, it has a light detent. So in the action, right there's the detent. So when I drop it, right th Ooh, that was past it. Right there's the detent. So now it's not that big of a deal because all you gotta do is hold a little low right here and you can get past it just like that. But if you hold it up here, it's gonna fumble with detent. Now, is that that big of a deal? No, because it has a reverse detent track. So it's still cool because you can, even if I'm on it, I can swing past it. Ooh. All you gotta do is, like, when you wanna swing past a detent track like or ball like that, see how I'm doing it? All you do is you just put pressure this, so what I'm doing is I'm gonna swing it this way and just stop it. So when I go like that, it swings right past it. So it's not that big of a deal, and it makes a cool sound. But you do have a chance of yourself locking it back up like, like that. So, but you can go past it, and also I can kinda, angle my finger to where it'll still hit it and be past it so it just takes a little bit of um you know playing around with to get used to now the next thing is and this is the last thing this is the last bad thing and then we'll sum everything up the blade is pretty damn close to this back spacer now i have already sharpened it remember so i've already taken a little steel off but I can touch it. Listen. That's me touching it right here, touching it with my pointer. Now, if I just go like this, uh, if I go my finger sideways, I can touch it, but it's not cutting me. Now, I have a very sharp knife on it, so I'm, all I'm barely touching is just right there. I don't, I'm not touching anywhere else, just right there. That's the only spot I can touch, but it's still there. Now... There, there's a couple different things they could have done. I'm not going to go over all the things, but, it, you know, it's not that big of a deal, to be honest, because even if I slip off right here, I've already tried this. I've wedged my finger, and I can't cut it. So I can't really complain too much. And when you go like this, you know, and once it comes out, it's obviously not going to hit it because the knife is gone now. But if you slip off, I don't think you'll have any big deal. And then when it's in the pocket... You're not going to get yourself. You're fine, but it's just one of those things. And after one sharpening, not that big of a deal. But that's the last thing. Sum it all up. I really like this knife. The nice build quality is phenomenal. I love the blade geometry. The action is really nice. 
Um, I do wish the de the the jimping. The worst thing to me, I think, of this whole knife is just this jimping. I wish they would have just put the jimping all the way up to the top. It would have made the front flipper work so much easier. Now it does still work, so it's not that big of a deal. But that's that's what it is. That's the problem. This isn't even that big of a deal back here, um, especially for my hand size. Um, now, if you have smaller hands, like I said, you're going to try to wedge it up there and it's going to get caught right there. But it's not a big deal for full-size hands. Now, I do really, really like this knife. I love the blade shape, love the ergos, love the action, the build quality. This is definitely a user for me, and I'm going to use the heck out of it. Jelly Jerry, yeah, two thumbs up. Great design, great knife. The, the blade geometry is beyond amazing. I love this knife. The ergos are fantastic. You really thought this one out, bud. Thank you. Peace.